Welcome aboard the cruising show. If you're new here, my name is Ken. I'm here with my wife, Andrea, and this is the cruising show on Northern Viking Explorer. Today, we are going to be talking about the cruise port of Galveston and what it's like to sail out of that port. And we're going to share our experiences with you as well. Thank you for joining us today. As you know, Ken and I love to talk cruising. Yes. So we're glad that you're here to talk cruising with us. Please share in the comments where you're watching from or listening from. Mm -hmm. And if you've been to Galveston or you've got some tips to share, please share them with us as well, because we don't know everything. We'd love to learn mm -hmm. and share it with our community. Yeah. And bring you guys into the conversation as well. We, we don't know everything. We try to know as much as we can, but we're always learning as well. Um, so if you are watching us today, thank you again for joining us. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook. You can listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform, Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. So again, thank you for um, joining us again. There are a few um, re recognizable names out there. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. I believe um, you've been with us before. So thanks for joining us. And we've got Apelia. Um, where did you go here? From Vegas. Thank you for joining us from Vegas. We appreciate that. Um, so we have, a, again, a fun show. And... Um, again, join along and we can pop your, your comments up on the screen and we can try and bring those into the show. But uh, shall we dive right into it, Andrea? Yes. We will you know, dive into it. Let's talk real quick uh, just about Galveston and Houston. Really quick overview, uh, some information. Yeah, some quick facts about Galveston and Houston. So first of all, if, you're, if you haven't been to Galveston before, it's not, Houston would be the most Kind of the biggest city that's nearby so that would be the first thing you should know it is definitely a resort town so whether you're um, from the houston area you'll probably a lot of people go there for the weekends that sort of thing but of course there's lots of beaches that sort of stuff and of course cruising is out of there it's on the gulf coast of texas and it's an island about so it's about 50 miles from houston that's right a couple of funny facts um <laughs> the first bakery in Texas was opened there in 1838. I like bakeries. I like sourdough. <laughs> yes, <laughs> by Christopher Fox. And it was once once the second richest city in the United States. I was surprised by that. Yes. But it actually makes sense when you learn why. It was to do with the port and trade. So they yes. made a lot of money uh, being able to export and import mm -hmm. out of out of their ports. Yes. No, it's, it's really cool. So... Um, I know we asked you guys where you're from. So uh, again, Mike um, is from Palm Springs, love Palm Springs. And we've got, uh, where did I see it? We've got Nabor is from Santa Barbara, California. So welcome aboard you guys welcome. Um, and we appreciate it. So we'll keep dri or diving into this. Flying into, well, I guess getting to Galveston, you would fly typically into Houston. Um, so there's two major airports in Houston. There's IAH, which is George Bush, mm -hmm. and that's about 70 miles or an hour and 10 minutes from the port. Now, I'm going to put a big asterisk next to the hour and 10 minutes because <laughs> we'll talk about this a little bit later in our experience. We'll come back to, we'll come back to that. And um, then there is the our hobby airport. Which is more convenient. It yes. is closer for the main airport. It's about 41 miles or... 43 minutes away from <laughs> from the port so we've actually flown into both of them um for cruises and hobbies a fair bit smaller i prefer hobby based on the location but sometimes you know you don't have a lot of options mm -hmm. not as many airlines fly into hobby so um you're, you're not going to have quite as many options as iah mm -hmm. you want to talk about um what's in houston as well okay yeah now one reason i do like cruising out of Galveston, <clears throat> sorry, is I love Houston. I love mm. Houston for many reasons. And one of the reasons is Houston has amazing shopping. Yes. They have excellent malls, lots of outlet malls. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, it seems like every exit on the freeway, there's another Ross. Well, <laughs> I love Ross Dress for Less. <laughs> you're happy. Every, yeah, every exit, it feels like there's shopping and a big mall. And I know it's not every exit, but you don't have to drive very far, far to find the next mall. Um, there's big outlet malls. Um, if you're watching on one of the streams, this mm -hmm. is the one actually that's quite fairly close to Galveston, maybe 20 minutes from Galveston. But there's 
larger one. There's other ones up towards Galveston as well. And or, no, sorry, the, um, Houston. Was it called the Galleria? They have a really high end mall we went to. Not this last trip, but the trip before. I believe it's the Galleria. Yeah, that had lots of high end. Like if you want shops. some high end shopping, yeah, it's fun to venture through. But there's, you know, there is way more than shopping to do in Houston. Uh, there's an aquarium. There's the Houston Zoo. And the Kima Boardwalk, which the we the Kima Boardwalk, we've been there I think two or three times. We've really enjoyed that. So um, it's more I don't know what you would call it a bay that kind of goes up towards Houston. Um, there's kind of an amusement park area there. It's called the Kima Boardwalk. Lots of restaurants. There's a little kind of town center in that area. I believe there's a lighthouse, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's a it's an awesome place to go visit if you're there before your cruise. They've got lots of rides. There's actually a, an old wooden roller coaster there as well um, called the Boardwalk Bullet, if you like that sort of thing. Those, I don't know. I <laughs> They feel rickety, but they're, I'm sure they're safe. <laughs> it's a really nice, it has a real family-centered feeling there. Mm -hmm. For an amusement, amusement park, it felt very... Um, somehow like cozy at the same time like yeah. around the water and all the dining options mm -hmm. yeah we enjoy walking around there yeah no for sure and the other place is the space center of course you're in houston the space center the space center is not too far actually from the kima boardwalk so they do have something called the city pass so i don't know if you've, any of you have ever booked the city pass before um it's a pass that gives you access to a lot of the attractions and if you're going there and you have a couple of days, check that out because I know the Kima Boardwalk is on that and all sorts of other attractions. And it's significantly discounted. If you're um, going to you do a lot of things, if you're going to do a lot of things. So check out the City Pass. Um, and we'll talk about the the um, Galveston Cruise Port as well before mm -hmm. we kind of get into the nitty gritty of this. Mm -hmm. So it's the fourth largest cruise port in the United States. Over a million passengers last year yes and i'm sure there's going to be even more in the future yeah. it is a busy port yeah um so royal caribbean just opened their new port there let me i think i have a photo of that because we sailed by it um for those of you on the stream so royal caribbean has their new port now the or the terminals i should say the terminals are not too far from one another you'll see the carnival one a little bit further down is the royal caribbean terminal um and there's quite a few different companies that sail out of there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's rumors that MSC is going to be coming to Galveston. Nothing that I've heard of official yet on that. Mm -hmm. But um, MSC. And those are big ships. Yeah. If MSC comes, that's like another very large ship coming into Galveston. Yeah. So there's there's that. Um, the Jubilee is coming later this year at the end of the year. So that Carnival. is Carnival. And that's the sister ship to the Mardi Gras and the celebration yeah. so another really big ship it'll be replacing the vista which mm -hmm. is there currently so it's going to be fairly bigger ship mm -hmm. and carnival apparently is doing some renovations i think it's terminal 25 they're doing some renovations on to accommodate that ship mm -hmm. um so other ships did we mention then cl prima no nope. yeah so, so that's going to be coming there um what other ships we said i uh, mentioned royal caribbean but the harmony of the seas i believe is replacing the allure Yes. So the Lord yeah. will be leaving. Yeah. So um, another big ship. And other ships do sail out of there. Yeah. And uh, we all know it's always changing. So I believe the Carnival Dream and Breeze sail out of there, the Voyager of the Seas, Disney Magic, Regal Princess, and more. So there's a lot of ships that sail out of, of that mm -hmm. area. Oh, Apelia asked, um, any new Carnival ships out of Galveston? So yes, the Jubilee is coming. I believe it's in December that it's yeah, arriving yeah. of this year. And again, I think you mentioned that already. It is um, the sister ship to the Mardi Gras. So if you want to see what that ship is like, you can go back and watch our Mardi Gras vlogs. Um, I'm sure there'll be some changes, but it'll be very similar. There's to that. a ton of fun things to do on that class of ships. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty incredible. So roller coaster. There's a roller coaster. I did the roller they, coaster. They do fun. things really fun on yeah. that ship. So, um, oh, perfect. So, um, Nabor, I've only gone out of Long Beach in January. January will be my first time going out of Galveston on the Jubilee. So, there oh, you go. Exciting. That's exciting. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll, if you haven't been on that class of ship before, it'll be a an lot awesome of time. fun. A lot of fun. For sure. So other than that, let's jump over our kind of 
main one of our main topics here that mm -hmm. we have is what is in Galveston because there is quite a bit in Galveston it is it is you know we didn't have a lot of time in Galveston on this trip mm. but it's definitely a place you could interruption time I forgot oh. to mention we're both oh. drinking out of our Houston oh, yeah, mugs. yeah. So sorry yeah. totally off topic yes our Houston mugs Houston. Yay. Um, I believe this is the newer one though. That's the newer one. This one's a few years old. It's the older stuff. That's why you have to keep cruising and traveling so you can update your Starbucks mugs, right? That's why yeah. we cruise. Yeah. We're always on the hunt for <laughs> Starbucks mugs. So <laughs> Houston mugs. I didn't see any Galveston mugs, by the way. No, um, no, no. But I don't even know if we went into Starbucks in Galveston. Oh, we did. We did. It was in the grocery store. We, we went in there, but I didn't see any. So hello, sleepy eye. From Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. <laughs> Perfect. Welcome. Welcome, welcome aboard. So, um, yeah. So, what is in Galveston? Um, starting out with the old town? Yeah. So, or, 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 let's call it a downtown. It's kind of the original city center. Mm -hmm. they've, they've actually kept that old vibe. It's very, did they say Victorian style? The buildings and... Yeah, it's very um, old fashioned. If you're again, if you're watching on the stream, I've got a photo up. Um, you can see the buildings are quite low, and some of them have kind of the covered. I don't know what you'd call it, walkways with posts and um, just rougher streets, but rustic and some, lots of small restaurants and. It feels shops. old intentionally, mm -hmm. like they've kept it to feel um, original. The shops and the stores are more small, independent mom and pop shops. You're not gonna find your chain restaurants or big uh, chain stores. Yeah, this this, that's all on the other side. And we'll get to that in a moment, but the downtown area, like little chocolate shops and boutiques. cafes, boutiques, that sort of thing. And that's right across from um, the dock where like the carnival ships are. Um, Royal Caribbean was, I don't know the exact distance, maybe a mile down further, um, but still not too far, far from this area. So um, the ship is like carnival ships are right next to downtown. Yes, there are some um, parking garages right there if you're looking at the photo. So that's not all of Galveston. It, mm -hmm. it's, it is much cuter when you get past the parking garages. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that Galveston has that it's amazing is a 10 mile... Um, what do you call that? I was going to say seawall. 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 Sea yeah. So this is on the other side of the island, and this is where you're going to find most of the beaches and everything like that. So there's a long kind of concrete 10-mile long boardwalk, and you can probably even maybe keep walking beyond that, but that's kind of the main um, boardwalk area. Now, on the beaches, I did see some lifeguards, and they will have mm – -hmm. uh, they had some signs um, indicating, you know – if it was safe to swim or not. Yeah. Um, and that's where you're going to find most of the hotels, the beaches, um, like lots of the chain restaurants or not even necessarily chain, but that's where most of the chain restaurants would be. Yes. Um, so it's, it's quite, that's kind of the busy area. It's All, the, everyone's who's coming there for a resort time wants the beach and that's where you're going to find that high it. energy vibe, fun, lots of young people. And it's also where you're going to find pleasure pier which is um, kind of one of the main attractions over there. It's got uh, rides, food. It's kind of a carnival style, not carnival cruise, but carnival. <laughs> um, lots of rides, roller coasters, that sort of thing. So I believe there's 15 rides, if I'm not mistaken, there mm -hmm. um, at the Galveston Island Historic Pleasure Pier. And I don't think we have this in our notes. There's a little bit kind of beside that. There's kind of a we're this we bought the saltwater taffy oh yeah yeah the shop so there's some shopping kind of a i don't know what you'd call it uh marketplace kind of thing and there's that wasn't there a bubba gumps at the entrance yes so yeah. to actually they go past bubba gumps you do have to pay admission to get in so mm -hmm. you can't just walk to the end of the pier and look around um you'll need to buy a pass yeah um so beyond that there's <laughs> A lot oh, of other things, lot and we haven't stuff. we haven't done these ones. There's something called the Schlitterbahn, <laughs> Schlitterbahn right. Schlitter in Galveston Island Water Park. So it's a massive water park. Um, so if you're going with a family, that might be a great place to stop. There's also something called Moody Gardens, which is, has like a big pyramid with aquarium, hotel, golf, amusement center, mm -hmm. some slides there as well. Um, so 
again, if you're going there with a family, maybe wanting an extra few days of excitement with like, stuff like that, um, Schlitterbahn and Moody Gardens might be options. There's for so many tours and museums too. Mm -hmm. that, like if you're into haunted ghosts or you're into a Navy history, there's uh, museums for about anything. And plus also a lot of arts and music, mm -hmm. just about anything you could want. There's a lot of options there. Yeah. And also it was evident that fishing is really big in Galveston. So if you're into fishing, um, I'm sure you can find somebody who can help you out there. Yeah. So um, Apelia says, it sounds like there's a lot of things to do in Galveston. And yes, there are. Yeah. Um, from free stuff, if you just want to hang out on the beach, of course, that's free. But, um, there's a lot of paid stuff, especially if you're if you're into that. So, um, yeah, I I enjoy. We, unfortunately, when we were there in March, mm -hmm. um, we went to spend the day in Galveston the day before our cruise and the rain we had it was it was good and then the rain came in so it, we had to cut our day short but you can see in some of those pictures we posted that it can get gloomy there as well um just because it's on the ocean which is typical on a coastal area yeah yeah no, we know for sure and you know one good thing too before your cruise is they have some practical shopping there I'm going to call it practical mm -hmm. they have Target they have Walmart and what I say oh grocery stores and actually we went into the Walmart yes and it felt really new but it's not funny but it's funny there's sunscreen in I've never seen so much sunscreen in a store in my life so there is a lot of sunscreen there's sunscreen in almost every aisle mm -hmm. and it's a good thing to buy your sunscreen before you get on the cruise because the price of sunscreen is definitely inflated on the cruise ship yes yeah so even in a lot of the ports the shops next to at the ports you can tell that the sunscreen's expensive so um so yeah. there's walmart and target, target. so if you need, if you need some things, lumber there's even a home depot so <laughs> that might be hard to bring on the ship <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> but it's there so sure. um yeah and hotels again we've mentioned it's a resort town mm -hmm. so it's right a lot of the hotels are along the um the seawall which is right on the beach and you can see there's lifeguards there's little piers all along there um it was a fairly windy day when we were there and there's also um again some large hotels so if you're watching in the stream you can see um some of those and i think that's a large grocery store there as well there's also um a lot of chain hotels down there so yes you get your you know holiday in or um, all your basic brand, like brands you're familiar with mm -hmm. are also down there as well. Some more independent lines that you can book. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. So from there, um, we need to talk about the price though. We do. Well, where we're, I'm losing my notes. Sorry guys. We're yeah, uh, because, because Galveston is a resort town, it's going to be pricier. Mm -hmm. And one thing, um, the areas around Houston, I actually found quite affordable for hotel prices. And because Galveston is the resort place that people want to be and hang out, yeah, um, prices do jump significantly. I think mm -hmm. it was almost three times, at least double, if not three times the price of some of the other areas close by. Yes, you're you're paying a lot, a premium to be on the water. You're paying a premium to be close to the ship. Um, and some of them will have shuttles to the cruise ships and some of them won't. So that's something to look into as well. We definitely considered staying there because I think um, Galveston is an amazing place to stay. Mm -hmm. Just be prepared that you're not getting your $79 a night hotel room or like no. you're not, uh, be prepared that you're going to pay a good deal more. Deal $79. Yeah. We haven't paid that in a long time. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm still stuck like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um yeah so hotels on the outskirts of houston again can be significantly cheaper mm -hmm. and we'll get into our experience and actually why we made the decision to stay a little bit further out in a moment mm -hmm. so um we did want to talk as well about transportation um just because there's it can be a little tricky yeah and now some there's I know, we realize some people are going to be driving, some people are going to be flying. Um, a lot of people are flying in though. So mm -hmm. one way that is pretty simple to do 
is if you take the shuttles that are offered by the cruise line. That's probably the simplest peace of mind. Yeah. It gets a little complicated if you're flying in the day or day before. You need to go back to the airport mm -hmm. to catch the shuttle and go back. But definitely when you get off of the ship, if you don't want to have to plan anything or think of it yeah. and you just want it all pre-organized and no stress, you're probably looking around 40 to roughly $60 per person each way. Mm -hmm. But it's um it's also depending on which airport you're going to, Hobby or IAH, as well as the cruise line, it's gonna vary. It will, but actually, if you have extra onboard credit that you need to use up, mm -hmm. that can be a good way to help eat up some of that money if you don't want it to go to waste. Yeah. So yeah, we because we looked into doing that and then um we spent our onboard credit. So <laughs> <laughs> well. oops. Um well that's what it's there for. Mm -hmm. To spend mm -hmm. it. To spend, yeah. <laughs> But um, so there's taxis. Now we haven't actually taken a taxi um, to the airport. So if any of you have taken a taxi from Galveston to the airport, uh, maybe leave a comment of how much that costs because we don't know. But there was yeah. taxis, quite a few taxis. Um, we took Lyfts or Ubers um, to and from, and we'll get into the pricing, pricing of that in that a moment. Fluctuate, and they will drop you right off at the ship and. Um, it's convenient. So it that's what we did. We're, we'll, we will get into that a little bit more um, momentarily. There is something called Galveston Salt Water Moms. I believe that's what it's called. Yes. You can find them on Facebook and they... They're are, private. They're private. Um, I think it's a group of moms who do shuttle service. And people like Rave love them yeah. online. So we have never used their service, but people... It's something you would need to organize in advance not from the cruise ship trying to get home. Yeah. So um, you can find them. I know you can find them on Facebook. Yeah. So you can check them out. Um, Nabor is asking what the weather is like in January. So we haven't been in January both times. We've, oh, we went. No, both times we're in March that we've gone um, to, to Galveston. We actually sailed out of back in the day. Um, Norwegian sail had a port near the Kima boardwalk closer to mm -hmm. to um, Houston. Houston and we sailed out of there but I think they closed that because of of too much fog so you can expect <laughs> fog yeah so um I if any of you have been there in January maybe leave a comment to help Nabor I, along I, I think it was around 70 degrees though in March it was we I had was, one nice day like that got a little warmer but yeah. then you can when the fog comes in, the temperature definitely drops a little cooler. I was comfortable in t-shirt and shorts. The week before our cruise had been pouring rain. Pouring rain and the footage of people on the ship, they were all wearing coats and jackets. Yeah. So you will need to be prepared that you could have cooler weather, bring a jacket. I would say, especially for the sea days, um, the the one going down and the last day coming back. Yeah. Those can be cooler. And there's a lot of fog because even our crews coming back, we well, were late coming back because of fog. A lot of fog. Yeah, you can hear the fog. They're blowing. The we horn. woke up in the morning expecting to be at the dock, and we were still sailing. And when you when we looked off the balcony, we were going so slow, um, cruising into the port of Galveston, just because it was you could barely see anything. It was so foggy. So don't think you're in Mexico yet, even though you're close. <laughs> It, it will be a little cooler, I would expect. Yeah, yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. Saltwater Moms, back to that. Mm -hmm. um, I know you wanted to mention parking. So, if you're driving a lot, you know, actually, I want to say this. I noticed a lot of people drive to the port. Yes. In in Galveston. Like, a lot from surrounding states. There was a lot of people who, had, who we talked to who had basically driven all night to get there. And that is a common thing. Um but parking at the port of Galveston is affordable. It's one of the lowest priced um, cruise ports for parking mm -hmm. because they have so many private um, parking garages. Yeah. It's driven the price down. So when I did a quick look, it, the cheapest I could find, and maybe there's even better options, I don't know, but it was $70 yeah. for the week and then going up. Yeah. And now, when your parents cruised, what, 15 years ago? Yes. They, it was... So this is when car rentals were cheap back cheap, in the day. Back in the day, 
it was cheaper for them to keep the car rental for the week and park it at the port rather than paying the shuttle paying the shuttle so they just kept the car rental and parked it for the week that and again that was back in the day when car rentals were cheap and um even parking would have been cheaper but yeah there's car there's, rentals weren't that cheap for no us. Not, not this time <laughs> so um times have changed definitely the time i know it's it's hard to uh follow the <laughs> <laughs> to keep up and not mourn but you still only be <laughs> So one thing that we struggled with, though, was finding, we like to rent a car and do things before the cruise. We struggled to find a one-way car rental from any of the airports to Galveston, and it wouldn't let us do it. And I don't know, maybe there's not car rentals going to Galveston. We couldn't find There any. were car rental, at least one company in Galveston, but they did not allow us to rent a one-way either drop-off mm -hmm. or to pick it up and drop it off. Like yeah. the other direction. So we, we were watching for months trying to get a car rental that we could drop off in Galveston. Because we've done that in Long Beach. We've done that um, in Port Canaveral. We've done that in a few places. And we do one-way car rentals, drop it off, and then just do a quick Uber to the ship or a shuttle. Which we've enjoyed because mm. then we'll often do the self-disembarkation. We'll get off early. We'll rent the car. We'll spend have a late flight. And we actually get to enjoy another day Mm -hmm. in that city but we weren't able to find that no so um we'll get into the the our workaround a uh, workaround and that in a moment so that's kind of the transportation to and from and mm -hmm. there's lots of options it's just the distance can make them a little pricier than at other ports um so yeah well should we jump into our experience or yeah we can yeah. share our story and what we did and why and how it went some things were unexpected mm -hmm. some things got a little stressful and why you always leave extra time yeah so we kind of already talked about hotel pricing so we actually on our recent trip we stayed in lamarck which if you're again if you're on the stream you can see is out in this area um it's kind of lamarck and texas city is right next to it so we stayed out in this area here and it's not too far from Galveston Island, so um, it's it's about quite convenient. About a twenty, minutes. About a 20, 20 minute drive. So it makes it yeah. really easy to um, enjoy the outskirts of Houston and all the shopping. Yeah. But you can easily do a day trip into Galveston and get to enjoy the beach. And hotels were, I would say, half the price. At least half the price. Yeah. Yeah. At least half the price. Um, but what the final decision was that we were going to stay out there was that's where we could return our car rental that was the closest car rental we could find that we could drop the car off to mm -hmm. galveston yeah so there's so we rented from iah or um, george bush mm -hmm. did a one-way car rental to lamarck and we were not the only ones doing that there was a line up at the car rental return um waiting for them to open i believe it was waiting. nine in the morning yeah and we're all eager to get to the cruise ship so we're all trying to drop our car off and they didn't at the time permit us just to drop the keys off. So we had to no. wait. Yeah. So that area was nice because there was lots of shopping. That's where the outlet mall is. That's where the Bucky's is. My you favorite. Knew that was coming. <laughs> Ken, Ken really enjoyed. Okay, we 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 also enjoyed Bucky's coffee too. That yeah. Was... So that's convenient. It's right there. Um, there's Walmart. There's any last minute things you need, but we enjoyed the outlet mall. We... <laughs> the we outlet mall was really quiet there as well. Yeah, we don't have an outlet mall by us, so outlet malls are extra fun. No, probably the closest one is probably four or five hours. So Yeah, and then yeah. we enjoy all the restaurants that are around there and all the options. So Oh, we're look, happy. look at what oh, we have here. Oh, Bucky's. Oh. <laughs> if you haven't been to Bucky's before, and I know if you're from Texas, you're probably like Bucky's, they're on every corner. It is a massive gas station, bigger. Give it a Google search. It's huge. It's like a grocery store in there. And uh <laughs> Every time I see one, I have to stop. It's a grocery store for men. <laughs> <laughs> Gas station for, uh, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where we stayed. And basically, we figured why, if we're going to be returning our car rental out there, there's no point in staying in Galveston. And we can save all the money. It's convenient. We'll just drive into Galveston. And actually, you'd mentioned $79 hotel. And I was, I said, no, that's been a long time. We actually had um hopper hopper the hopper app and our um, it's the first time we'd ever used hopper i was actually scared that uh 
that it was somehow a scam. <laughs> yeah, no, because <laughs> it was so cheap. Uh, regardless, they had the first some deal that your first booking was half price, so we probably paid seventy nine dollars. I might have even been less. Yeah, it was so that was a really was, good deal. It was really cheap, <laughs> and it included breakfast. <laughs> yeah, so we were happy and free parking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was in the Lamarck area. Mm -hmm. Now, getting to the port, so we we did our one way car rental. Um, and we dropped that off at 9 a.m. And then we took an Uber from there to the port, which was quite convenient. It was, I looked it up um, mm -hmm. yesterday. We paid $22 plus tip. Yeah. So from Lamar Total. to the port. Yeah. And that's what everyone at the car rental was doing. Everybody was ordering their Ubers mm -hmm. and they were showing up within five minutes probably. So I don't know how long the line needs to get where they run out of Ubers, but it, we were good. I would recommend being at the car rental. A little early if that's what you're going to do yeah and actually get out of the car and stand in line yeah because otherwise you're going to be waiting yeah we got there about 10 minutes early and we were first in line but then there was a um, number of people behind us in line by the time they opened and then they're so. also calling ubers and behind us so you could end up waiting mm -hmm. yeah um the other thing that i think about previous cruises the traffic going to galveston not the highway, but in Galveston at the port seemed way less traffic than the ones I can think of are Long, Long Beach, Beach was horrible. <laughs> and even Port Canaveral, our Uber driver was stuck for quite a while trying to pick us up. Yeah. So um, our Uber driver basically just pulled in and dropped us off. It's a little busy with um, passengers getting off the ship. Mm -hmm. Like you had to wait for them to cross the road and like it was busy, but you weren't stuck in a traffic mm -hmm. line. Well, and it was right at the busy time, right around 10 a.m. when everyone's getting off and showing up. So um, I was pleasantly surprised with that. And that ship had come in late, too. So there was a lot of people yes. coming off. Like it was, that would was, have been a very busy time. I, I think about it because there was, I can't remember which the other carnival ship. There was another carnival ship there. Yeah. There was and a Royal Caribbean ship. So it wasn't that we were the only ship either. There was multiple ships in port that day. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, so that's how we got there. So again, we did a one-way car rental and an Uber to get there, and that was quite convenient. Now, the story we going back to IAH. So we didn't actually have to. Were we flying out at five o'clock or something like that? Like yeah, five, five. So we had most of the day to get there. Do you want to kind of share the story about that? Well, yeah. So we thought, you know what? We have a later flight, low stress. We took one of the last tags that you pick up. Mm -hmm. for disembarkation um because we sent our luggage out the night before and we hadn't anticipated the the fog and the ship arriving late mm -hmm. which we still had plenty of time yeah like we thought we thought yeah yeah so um so we you know we got up we went to breakfast mm -hmm. we enjoyed our you know and took our time and sat and we're chatting with people enjoying the last day and we took the basically the last tags to get off the ship because we had we figured we'd drink coffee and we're not in a hurry. Let everybody else go. Right. Yeah. Like we'll just take our time and enjoy. And so it didn't, it was it closer to 10 30 when we got off. Yeah. It was quite late. It was almost 11, I think. And, uh, we had hemmed and hawed about booking the Uber. Sorry, it's, not the, the, the uh, cruise the shuttle, shuttle but the we ship. hadn't. And we're like, we'll just Uber back. That was our plan or mm -hmm. lift. And when we got off the ship, some of the quotes you were getting were, was it for over $400? So we, I checked them. I'd gone onto the Uber and Lyft app ahead of time. And it was usually around $80, $90 to go back to IAH. We got off the ship and the quotes I was getting, Lyft was over $400. It was like $462. And Uber was, I want to say $350 to get back to IAH. I'm feeling a little like sick and panic at this moment. Cause, Cause that's I, a lot of money. I mean, we could have taken the cruise shuttle for 50 or $60. So now uh, we're just, Oh, that's, well, that's there goes lot. our savings. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I said, well, why don't we wait a little bit? And so we waited 15 minutes and checked again and the price had dropped maybe a hundred dollars. So, but it was still pricey. Um, and, we, but we, we walked a little bit, we walked around a little bit. And so then I checked again, half an hour later and, the price had come down a lot more. So um, we could, then five minutes later, we booked it at $96. So we were like, let's do that. Um, so we did 
we probably waited around an hour to drop it from three, four hundred dollars down to ninety six dollars. But that was well worth the hour. But at this point, we're like, oh, we still have lots of time so mm. we can we can wait this out. Yeah. Yeah. But there was another little problem we hadn't anticipated and it was construction. Yes. Yeah. We were in that. I was at Uber. That yes. We went with an hour and 40 minutes, which should have been about an hour and 10 minute drive. Mm -hmm. There was, there was a lot of construction and a lot of construction our, and lineups and I, accidents. I was starting to feel stressed and, you know, you're thinking at that point, you know, one wrong turn and getting stuck in traffic even more could mm -hmm. really eat into your. Yeah. And so we got there, <laughs> we got there with plenty of time. We got there at the exact time we needed to be, but we thought we were going to be there two, three hours early. And that's where I think the stress comes is like, are we going to run into any other problems? And of course, when we got there, we were flying international, but somehow our flight was in the domestic. So, so we, were at we, the had wrong to take, terminal. we had to take the little train and it just, um, yeah, it just was one of those kind of hectic days. We had plenty of time, but it could, you could easily have run out of time. Well, and we had some plans too of like, we thought we were going into the international terminal. So we thought we were going to have all the restaurant options mm -hmm. and we we're going to kind of make it like a date and enjoy. Yeah. And we <laughs> we kind of like the airport. So we thought it would be a nice time to sit down pick a restaurant and relax. We were, we were in a smaller area and yeah, we only had a couple a, of options, but. And it was a little more <laughs> rest, but it all turned out, but that's it's why all. you gotta leave extra dive because you don't know. Mm -hmm. Tina girl travels. Welcome. Um, you're one of my favorite people. Well, it's actually my sister, but she says that's insane. And I know she's talking about the, um, prices for Uber and Lyft and yes, it was insane. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you haven't checked out her channel, she does a lot of international travel. Go check out Tina girl travel. She's got some really good, uh, content over there. She does. Yeah. And, um, uh, sneak alert. She might be a guest on this show in a few weeks. So. We're, we're hoping. Did, Fingers crossed. We I had know, to talk her into I know, it. I know, because she did a big cruise that we yeah. want to talk about. Yeah. So um, hopefully in a few weeks that's going to happen. So um, other than that, did you have any thoughts? I think that's kind of what we have for this show on, on Galveston. Hopefully yeah. it kind of gives you an idea of what to expect and maybe um, helps you plan a little bit if you're heading there. Because um, if you don't, I, I think planning is key for going to Galveston just because it's not close. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to know, you yeah. need to know. Yeah. But if we missed anything or you know of something amazing in Galveston, please, please put it in the comments. And if you're watching, um, mm -hmm. go look at those comments and see, cause you learn a lot by seeing what other people have done. Yes. And I do have one last photo. Sorry if you're on the podcast. Um, this is from the Galveston airport or sorry, the Houston IH airport. <laughs> I just love this photo. It's a cow in a space shoot, space, space shoot, <laughs> space suit holding a Texas flag. It just is uh, fun. I really like <laughs> going to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas. So um, yeah, we enjoy visiting there. Great place. It's actually one of my favorite places to sail out of. Yeah. Uh, I, and, I enjoy and it. Galveston, um, even though we didn't stay in Galveston, would be a lovely place to just stay in a hotel and enjoy the mm -hmm. beach and walk around, enjoy restaurants and shopping. Yeah. It's a lovely, lovely place. Yes. I a hundred percent agree. So I guess we'll wind it down there. Um, yeah, it's been fun kind of streaming with you guys today. And thank you again for watching and listening on all the platforms that are available. I see some, uh, some comments again, coming up. Um, Apelia. Yes, that was a lot of money. And, um, we're glad we didn't have to pay that much. And, uh, oops, I've got, uh, here, we'll bring it up. Um, thank you guys for the live, for the live show. Yeah. Thank you, Navor, for joining us today. It's our um, pleasure. Pleasure. We, Thanks we, for listening to yeah, us. <laughs> we appreciate it. So, um, again, we try to do this on, not, we can't do it every week, but we try to do it most weeks. So again, we appreciate you all joining us today. We're going to yeah. cut it out there and go do some other stuff. Maybe book a cruise. I think so. I think we're going to book a cruise, so we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful week, everybody, and uh, we will see you soon. Take care.